Hello students, welcome to lecture 8 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's topic will be on real and reciprocal lattices. So, here is the lecture outline. We will discuss about periodic electromagnetic devices, go into the details of two dimensional lattices and the symmetry operations, briefly touch upon uh, translational symmetry or discrete translational symmetry which is relevant to the study of photonic crystals. We will look into the calculation of reciprocal lattice vectors, constructing reciprocal lattice, finding out the Miller indices, obtaining brilliant zone and then irreducible brilliant zone. Okay? So, let us first discuss periodic electromagnetic devices. As you can see on this particular slide, there are different types of you know periodic electromagnetic devices are shown here starting from diffraction grating to waveguides, wholly photonic band gap fiber, you have uh, band gap materials, matter materials, then you know, periodic array antennas, slow wave devices and frequency selective surfaces. So, these are all periodic devices where the property is mainly defined by the unit cell and the periodicity. So, what is the periodic structure? So, here you can see periodicity at atomic scale. So, these are different atoms okay? and if you try to replicate this in your engineering design where you make one unit cell and then try to repeat it periodically, you can actually get large scale periodicity something like this or this. Okay. So, what is fundamental here is that the math which describes the periodicity in atomic scale or large scale periodicity both are similar. So, let us look into how we can describe periodic structures. So, there is an infinite number of ways uh, a structure can be periodic. Despite this, uh, we will need to find a way to describe and classify this periodic lattices. So, we have to make some generalization to achieve that. So, we can classify periodic structures into 230 lattice uh, into 230 space groups, 32 uh, crystal classes, 14 bravais lattice and 7 crystal systems. Space group are basically the set of all possible combinations of uh, symmetry operations that could restore the uh, crystal to itself. So, there are too many 230 uh, space groups. So, we do not deal typically with space groups. How about uh, Bravais lattice? Yes. So, we mainly focus on Bravais lattice and the 7 crystal systems. So, if you look into Bravais lattice, you can see that the primitive lattices are set of all possible ways a lattice can be periodic if composed of identical spheres which are basically placed at the lattice points. You can also uh, consider you know the set of all Bravais lattices okay, which have the same holohedry or you can say the same shape of conventional unit cell. You can group them into crystal systems. That is why we have uh, 14 Bravais lattices and we have 7 crystal systems. So, let us take some examples and find out you know how do you uh, apply all these fundamental concepts on two dimensional lattices and also look into the symmetry operations which are possible. So, here are some examples of two dimensional Bravais lattice. You can see here this is a hexagonal lattice where the atoms or the unit cells you can say they are all arranged in a hexagonal array. They can also, so when you say hexagonal array, these two uh, vectors T1 and T2 are basically same but of equal length, but the angle between them will be 120 degree. Okay? So, in case of square, you can understand that the lattice is basically square. Okay? So, the distance from here to here and here to here will be same again. So, you can say uh, modulus of T1 vector and modulus of T2 vector will be equal and in this case the angle between them theta is equal to 90 degree. You can also think of rectangular lattice where 
T1 and T2 will not be equal, but they will maintain that 90 degree angle. You can think of uh, rhombic lattice like this, where you can have this kind of uh, length L forming a diagonal pattern. So, here basically T1 is considered to be twice cos theta times T2 okay, and the angle is definitely not 90 degree. So, these are different uh, lattice types. You can also have oblique lattice where T1 and T2 are not equal and again you know angle theta between these two vectors is not 90 degree. So, you can understand the difference between this rhombic and oblique uh, Bravais lattice. Now, we will look into the symmetry operations that can be performed on Bravais lattice. So, the type of symmetry in which an object moves from one position to another position with the same orientation. Okay? So, in forward or backward motion that kind of symmetry is called translation. So, you can actually think of this moving forward or backward and that will actually replicate the same uh, part of the crystal. So, you can think of this infinite crystal to be invariant under translation operation. Similarly, you can also think of a rotational symmetry which is the symmetry in which an object fits into itself okay, um, while being rotated through 360 degrees. So, if you take this one and rotate this 360 degree, you see it actually comes back to itself. Okay? So, these are the kind of steps you can think of. right? So, and the, another type of symmetry is reflection symmetry. right? So, here you can see it is a type of symmetry in which a line could divide an object into two coincidental parts. So, if you can think of a line here, this part the left and the right part are basically mirror image of each other. So, it actually has got the mirrored symmetry right? or the reflection symmetry. So, with that we will now describe the primitive and the non-primitive lattice vectors. So, the axis vectors okay, will help us to define the shape and orientation of the unit cell and a unit cell is very important in case of any uh, periodic structure because that unit cell contains all the properties okay, and then it will be repeated periodically along you know one dimension, two dimension or three dimension depending on whether you are talking about 1D, 2D or 3D periodic structure. So, here you can see that you know this axis uh, vectors they cannot uniquely describe 14 Bravais lattice but what they can do, they can uniquely describe the seven uh, crystal systems. So, you can also think of translational vectors like this T1, T2 and T3 okay, which connect the adjacent points in the lattice and this can be used for describing the 11 uh, Bravais lattice systems. Okay. So, this you can understand that this one is same for this BCC as well as simple cubic right? and also for FCC. Okay. So, this kind of structure, so that is why you know the primitive axis vectors cannot uniquely describe uh, 14 Bravais lattice, but they can do the crystal systems. Okay. So, here you can see that uh, when you talk about primitive lattice, uh, they are basically the smallest possible vectors that can describe the unit cell and almost always when we use the level of lattice vector that uh, refers to the translational vectors like this, we do not talk about the primitive axis vectors. right? And uh, this is not the smallest one, so this will not be considered as a primitive translational vector. So, the primitive translational vector is basically the smallest possible vector. Okay. So, here we bring back again the description or discussion about discrete translational symmetry okay, which you can see in case of this uh, 1D uh, photonic crystal that is shown here and this particular black box, this thin box marks the unit cell. Right. 
so why is this important it is important because photonic crystals lack uh, continuous translational symmetry but they exhibit discrete translational symmetry and it means that the translation invariance holds only for distances which are basically multiple of a fixed step length or that is also known as the lattice constant so if you take you know the if th this is the lattice constant and you know in integral multiple of this lattice constant you will see that the feature is basically repeating so it has got this uh, discrete translational symmetry now because of this discrete translational symmetry okay you can also write that you know the lattice vector a is basically a y y cap because here you can see that the periodicity is extended along the y direction okay and you can also write that epsilon r as epsilon r plus minus a so this is um, true but then it it also repeats for all the integral multiple of a so it is better to be written as epsilon r equals epsilon r plus capital r where capital r is basically l a where l is an integer right so that way you can understand that discrete translational symmetry exists in the photonic crystal now because of the translational symmetry we have seen in the previous lecture also that the maxwell's operator theta cap okay must commute with all translational operators in the x direction and for lattice vectors capital r which lie in the y direction and r as you have seen it is basically represented as l a y cap what is l it's an integer a is the lattice constant right so the modes of theta cap are identified as the simultaneous uh, eigenfunctions of this translational operator represented by the plane waves which can be expressed like this okay so the first equation here shows the continuous translational operator where you are moving the system by a displacement of d but in this case uh, for the periodic crystal uh, or for the periodic system so dx is now replaced by capital r where capital r is basically integral multiple of the lattice constant a so you can also see d is replaced by this okay so this way you can actually see the eigen function okay which is represented by the plane waves fine so what we understand here that the modes with wave, wave vector ky and ky plus 2 pi by a they will form a degenerate set with the same eigenvalue of tr e to the power minus ky la right so tr cap is that operator okay operating on this fine so this is the tra discrete translational operator so all the modes with the uh, wave vectors ky plus m 2 pi by a so m is an integer will be called you know this this kind of modes will be degenerate so they will all have the same uh, frequency right and what is their eigen there and they will have the same eigen value e to the power minus i k y l a right so now let us see how do we calculate the reciprocal lattice vectors so let us consider uh, a periodic structure such as this one shown in the figure which is a set of identical parallel rods of uh, square cross section it can be you know tubes cylinders veins okay in uh, some kind of homogeneous host medium and uh, they are forming a uh, rectangular lattice or it can be also a square lattice rectangular lattice uh, a square lattice is basically a special case of the rectangular lattice right so in in this kind of a system we can think of the impermeability parameter which is eta xy that is basically epsilon naught by epsilon xy so this impermeability is periodic in the transverse direction x and y and it is basically uniform along the axial direction that is z so you can also write 
if you consider uh, a1 and a2 uh, as the periods in x and y direction okay so this is a rectangular lattice so the period here is a1 and a2 okay then eta xy will also satisfy the translational symmetry like this okay so anything in place of x you can write x plus m1 a1 for y you can write y plus m2 y2 and that the re property should repeat itself the impermeability should repeat itself and that is how this is a periodic rectangular lattice now this periodic function eta x y can be represented as a two dimensional fourier series in this particular form where you can say you know l1 ranges from minus infinity to infinity then you have summation over l2 ranging from minus infinity to infinity eta l1 l2 exponential minus j l1 g1 x times exponential minus j l2 g2 x so what are this g1 and g2 so g1 is basically 2 pi by a1 and g2 is 2 pi by a2 these are the fundamental spatial frequencies and the units are radian per millimeter okay so these are the spatial frequencies in the x and y direction and l1 g1 and l2 g2 are basically their harmonics so you can think of this one here okay so this is the rectangular lattice in which the rods are placed here we have shown them with circles you can also imagine squares because if you consider the previous figure they are having square cross section right so the period along x is a1 the period along a2 along y is a2 okay and this is the two dimensional fourier transform of this lattice points okay so you are changing from the x space to k space so here you can see the coordinates have changed to k x, k x and k y and uh, this is basically the reciprocal lattice of this one which which has got periods of g1 okay which is 2 pi by a1 and g2 uh, equal to 2 pi by a2 okay so this is the real lattice and this is the uh, reciprocal lattice so we understood that this is the Fourier domain lattice which is known as reciprocal lattice as the convention of solid state physics right now in this kind of uh, case what are the optical modes of a medium with this kind of with such symmetry so we can consider for waves traveling in the direction parallel to x y plane the modes are basically two dimensional block waves so you can write you know u x y equals p k x k y okay x y exponential minus j k x x e to the power minus uh, j k y y so what are this p k x and p k y they are basically you know the periodic function with the same period as the medium so this is how the you know this is the two dimensional block wave it means you know the the wave will also pick up the periodicity of the crystal and is, as you can see this wave is basically specified by a pair of block wave numbers kx and ky okay so another wave with block wave number kx plus g1 comma okay this will be k2 k2 plus g2 will not be a new mode okay it will be rather uh, the same mode right so here you can see that a complete set of modes in the fourier plane has block wave numbers located at points in the rectangle shown in yellow which is basically defined between you know um, kx within minus g1 by 2 to g1 by 2 and ky between uh, plus gy uh, plus g2 by 2 and so ky will be from uh, minus g2 by 2 to g2 by 2 right so as shown in the figure a complete set of modes in the fourier plane has uh, block wave numbers located at the points in the rectangle which is shown in yellow and this rectangle is defined by the boundaries of kx so kx will be 
from minus g1 by 2 to g1 by 2 and uh, k2 will be from minus g2 by 2 to g2 by 2 okay and that dictates the first brillouin zone so when you think of this yellow uh, rect uh, square or a, a rectangular area as the first brillouin zone okay so you may think of all the independent block wave vectors are basically captured here but there may be a lot of you know redundant ones so if you try to use the symmetry to further reduce the set of independent block vectors within this green zone what you will get you will basically come up with an area like this a triangle which is called the irreducible brilliant zone so here you will find all the independent block wave vectors which can be used to recreate this brilliant zone for example if you use rotational symmetry which is inherent to the square lattice okay you can uh, see that the irreducible brilliant zone can be rotated and folded here so you get this particular quarter then again you can do the mirror of it you will get this first half and then you take a mirror operation like this you can complete this entire uh, square so that way you can uh, form the entire brilliant zone from the irreducible brilliant zone right so in this irreducible brilliant zone the triangle is marked as gamma m x as i mentioned for the square lattice these are the three important points now for calculating uh, the lattice vectors okay what you can see here so this is a basically a two dimensional periodic structure which is comprising of parallel cylindrical holes and what is the lattice pattern here the lattice pattern is triangular or hexagonal okay so at those lattice points the uh, holes are placed so here from the figure you can say that a1 and a2 the two uh, basic uh, lattice vectors are basically equal okay and the angle between them is uh, 120 degrees right so when you try to uh, take this into fourier space okay you convert x and y into kx and ky okay and uh, you can see that this yellow marked region is basically the uh, brilliant zone which is basically a hexagon so here again when you try to find out the irreducible brilliant zone you can see that the you can find a triangle marked by gamma m k okay these are the three points which can mark the irreducible brilliant zone so we'll come into this that how do you obtain this uh, reciprocal lattice uh, by calculation okay so here is that uh, topic of calculating or constructing irreducible sorry now let us see how do we construct the reciprocal lattice so given a lattice with a set of uh, vectors lattice vectors capital r our job is to now find out all the reciprocal lattice vectors which can be denoted as capital g so we need to find all g such that g dot r is some kind of integer multiple of 2 pi for every r right then only they will like satisfy the condition that they are reciprocal lattice factors now for example on a simple cubic lattice with spacing of small a okay the vectors r would all be of the form r equals l a x x cap plus m a y y cap plus n a z cap so where l m n are basically integers right so we know that every lattice vector capital r can be written in terms of the primitive lattice vectors which are basically the smallest vectors pointing from one lattice point to another right so these are the lattice vectors right primitive lattice vectors so in the reciprocal lattice also they have the same set of you know similar set of primitive vectors you can name them as small b i okay so that every you know reciprocal lattice vector g 
can also be expressed as L B 1 plus uh, M B 2 plus N B 3. Again L M N are integers right. So, what is the requirement? The requirement is that you know g dot r should be equal to 2 pi n ok. So, n is an integer again ok. So, this is the requirement that we discussed here. So, this boils down to the primitive requirement. So, if you take the form that you have thought of ok. So, you can write g dot r. So, this is basically your r ok, r vector l m n. You can use different uh, integers to represent that they are not necessarily the same one. So, it can be l prime b 1 plus m prime b 2 plus n prime b 3 and that should be equal to 2 pi n. For all choices of l m n as you have seen ok, there this particular value should ok be true. Then only g is considered to be the reciprocal lattice vector of capital R. Now, a little thought will suggest us that we could satisfy the above if we construct b i so that a i dot b j equals to pi if i and j are equal and there is it is 0 this product is 0 if they are not equal ok. So, this one is not equal. Yeah. So, more completely you can basically write that a i dot b j equals 2 pi and then you have delta i j right. So, this when i and j are equal delta i j will be 1 when i and j are not equal it will be 0. So, given the set you have 3 vectors ok a 1 a 2 a 3 our task is to find the corresponding set b 1 b 2 b 3 such that this particular condition is satisfied that a i dot b j will be equal to 2 pi delta i j. So, one way to do it do this is to exploit the feature of the cross product. So, if you remember that you know x dot x cross y was 0 for any vector x and y. So, you can construct the primitive lattice vectors using the following recipe. So, you can take b 1 as 2 pi a 2 cross a 3 divided by a 1 dot a 2 cross a 3 ok. b 2 can be obtained like this and b 3 can be obtained using this formula. So, that is how you can obtain b 1 a 1 from from a 1 a 2 a 3 you can find out what is b 1 b 2 and b 3. So, to construct the reciprocal lattice what we do you first take the primitive lattice vectors a 1 a 2 a 3 and then perform the operations using this formula and obtain b 1 b 2 and b 3. So, with that you can actually understand that each direct lattice has a unique uh, reciprocal lattice. So, the knowledge of one lattice will definitely tell you about the other lattice ok. So, here you can see that the direct lattice vectors they are, they are using a different notation they are using small t ok as the notation for the direct lattice vectors small t 1, small t 2 and small t 3 ok and they actually look like this when you see this in the reciprocal lattice, but capital T 1, T 2 and T 3 are the res, uh, primitive vectors in the reciprocal lattice. So, there has to be some relationship between the small T 1 and T 2 and T 3 with capital T 1 and so on. So, if you try to understand some of the uh, commonly known lattice. So, if you take simple cubic as a direct lattice, its reciprocal lattice is also a simple cubic. For BCC uh, or body centered cubic uh, kind of lattice, the reciprocal lattice is a FCC face centered cubic and for FCC uh, if you look into the reciprocal lattice it is a BCC. 
for hexagonal it is again hexagonal so this is how a hexagonal lattice looks like this is how a fcc looks like and this is how a bcc crystal looks like okay so the blue color ones tell you about the direct lattice vectors so this is in 2d it means you just have only two vectors t1 and t2 so if you have small t1 and t2 known you can find out what is capital t1 and capital t2 okay and also other way if you know the capital t1 and capital t2 you can find out what is small t1 and small t2 okay these are just different notations other than using a a b and c you can also use uh, t1 t2 right for 3d it is like this so this is the formula that we have seen there you remember so b1 so this you if you take this formula okay this is exactly same as this one okay these are like just different notations so different books follow different conventions so i'm just showing you the different two most common notations used in this kind of calculations okay so you can find out what is capital t1 capital t2 and capital t3 right so all reciprocal lattice vectors must be an integer combination of the primitive reciprocal lattice vectors that makes sense because the final vector capital G is basically integral times of the um, reciprocal primitive lattice, reciprocal lattice vectors. So instead of G you can write capital T and you can say that the integer con uh, capital P, Q and R are basically the integers. So you can write like this okay and capital T1 bar T2 bar and T3 bar these are the primitive reciprocal lattice factors. Now let us look into Miller indices that is another interesting uh, way of representing planes within uh, periodic structures like crystals. So if you recall the definition of the reciprocal lattice vectors you have these three integers p q and r okay so this p q and r are basically called the miller indices of the planes in direct lattice which is represented by the reciprocal lattice vector okay t p q r and you can also represent it like this okay so if you say 1 0 0 plane it means it is 1 here, it is a the plane is basically having an intersection uh, or it is crossing the x axis at 1 and it is 0 0 means it does not intersect uh, y and z axis so it is parallel ok. So 1 0 0 plane is typically like this, if you have 1 1 1 plane ok, so it is basically uh, intersecting x, y and z at 1 1 1 ok. So, this one is basically uh, x bar ok. So, I think it is not clearly written. So, it is basically x bar ok. So, x bar means x bar means minus 1. So, this plane has got a uh, cross section with the x axis at minus 1 and then it is uh, crossing this y axis at 1 z axis at 1. So, it is 1 bar 1 1 plane ok. So, in such um, method you can think of 1 0 0 at this plane again this is another notation a 1 instead of using x y z you can also put a 1 bar a 2 bar and a 3 bar ok. These are basically the direct lattice ok planes ok. So, 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 ok. 1 1 0 will look like this, 1 0 1 will look like this and 0 1 1 will look like this ok. And you can also think of how 1 1 1 will look like, so it will have a you know cross section with A like this, so the plane will typically look like this fine ok. So now let us first see how do you construct the Wigner shaped cell. So how do you construct this? ok and why it is required. So, first you have to pick a point in the lattice to build a unit cell around it ok. So, this is the BCC conventional unit cell 
okay now you construct planes that uh, bisect the region between all adjacent point so if you take this and this two points this point and this point so there will be a plane i'm just drawing a line but you think of a plane it's basically this plane okay this plane which bisect that particular region and similarly you do it for all this uh, connecting lines okay so wherever you have uh, two adjacent points you are basically drawing a plane that bisect the region between the two adjacent points and when you add up all those points you basically get this wigner shades unit cell okay so this is how you got to draw it so you take this and this one as i mentioned you take the you draw the connecting line and then you draw a plane that perfectly bisects that line or you can say it bisects that region between this point and this point and then you repeat for all those possibilities and finally when you add up all the points you will get uh, you know this particular wigner shade cell now why it is important if you think of brilliant zone which is very very important for obtaining the properties of the photonic crystal to study the band structure and other properties so brilliant zone is basically constructed in the same way as the wigner shade cell only difference is that brilliant zone is constructed from the reciprocal lattice so brilliant zone is closely related to the wave factors and diffraction so the analysis of periodic structures is is often done in the reciprocal lattice or reciprocal space so brilliant zone for fcc lattice is basically a truncated octahedron with 14 uh, sides okay not slide sides so this is how it looks like okay so this is the brilliant zone of a fcc you can also draw this by yourself and uh, try that so you can see that this is almost a spherical one and um, so you can say that the fcc lattice has got the highest symmetry of the bravais lattice so in terms of symmetry if you put this triclinic has got the lowest uh, symmetry okay and then from sim simple cubic this is the brilliant zone okay then you have the, what is marked inside is the irreducible brilliant zone okay and then for bcc this is the brilliant zone and this is the fcc brilliant zone which you have seen even for diamond you can get uh, fcc brilliant zone so more or less you can see that the fcc one has got the highest uh, symmetric uh, brilliant zone among the all bravais lattice and then if you go to pseudo periodic structure they have the highest symmetry in terms of the uh, brilliant zone so now let us finally look into those irreducible brilliant zone and the important points of interest so several points of high symmetry are of several are of special interest okay so if you think of a cubic um, lattice okay so this is the cubic lattice uh, brilliant zone there gamma marks the center of the brilliant zone and then if you take m m is basically the center of an edge okay r is basically a corner point and x is basically the center of a face so you can think of the three uh, primitive reciprocal lattice vectors as t1 t2 and t3 and this particular volume here okay that volume is the irreducible brilliant zone so how do you um, consider this as the path Ah, so you need to traverse along the boundaries of this uh, irreducible brilliant zone to cover this entire um, volume. So you can start with gamma, then you go to x, then to m, then to gamma. So that that covers the bottom part, and then you go to r. Okay, then you come to x or m, and then you come back to r okay so that way you can actually and then you again have gamma right so that will kind of uh, complete traversing along the boundary points 
So, if you consider hexagonal um, lattice, so this is the hexagonal lattice uh, uh, brilliant zone. So, here the important point is gamma is again the center of the brilliant zone for each case. A tells you about the hexagonal uh, center of a hexagonal face, H is basically a corner point, K marks the middle of um, an edge which joins to rectangular faces means you are talking about this face and this face these are the two rectangular faces you are joining so this is k l is marked as the you know um, middle of an edge which joins a hexagonal face with the rectangular face so this one is l and m is marked as a center of the rectangular face okay so m here and m here do not actually designate the same points so, you got to keep these things in mind. So, these are the important points of symmetry depending on different lattice types. Similarly, for FCC, uh, you have K, L, U, W and X. Okay, These are the important uh, points Okay, and this is how the irreducible brilliant zone looks like. And for BCC, you have few points like H, H is the corner point joining four edges n is the center of a face okay and p is basically corner point which is joining three edges okay and gamma is again the center so here you can mark capital t1 capital t2 and capital t3 t3 these are the three primitive lattice vectors and if you want to cover the bcc the path will be gamma to h to n to gamma then to p then you can come back to H, then N and then again gamma, but we do not repeat it, right. So, we this is the path for BCC. So, why it is important to discuss about irreducible brilliant zone? Because if the field is known at uh, every point inside a single unit cell, then it is also known at any point in the infinite lattice because the field will just take on the symmetry of the lattice as the lattice is repeated. So, many times what happens there is still additional symmetry to be exploited. So, only considering the unit self itself is not enough because sometimes there are symmetry within the unit cell that allows you to even focus on a smaller region where you can find some you know very independent modes. Okay, and those modes can actually be you know those small region can be replicated few times to form your unit cell and then you can repeat your unit cell periodically. So, that way it will bring down the computational requirement as well. So, the smallest volume of space within the brilliant zone that uh, completely characterizes the periodic structure is known as the irreducible brilliant zone. So, what do we understood? It is a much smaller area than the brilliant zone itself where you have exploited additional symmetry. So, first this is the periodic lattice, this is the square lattice and this blue marked area is basically the unit cell. So, ideally you should only study the property of this unit cell that will tell you about the property of this entire lattice. Now, within this unit cell, you can see that you can actually mark the small triangular region, okay, where you can, if you know the property of this triangular region, you can take a, you know, rotational symmetry and get this particular uh, quarter. You can have mirror symmetry, you can form this upper half, you can take another mirror symmetry and you can form the complete square, right, because the field in each of the square is a mirror image to each other. Right. So, using this concept you can reduce the amount of computation and you can only calculate the points or calculate the modes inside this irreducible brilliant zone. So, what do you understood that if you have taken FCC lattice this is how the overall brilliant zone looks like, but this highlighted one is basically the irreducible brilliant zone and you can see for yourself that how small this volume is. So, the computation load is reduced, but you will be able to get the same information. Whatever 
properties you are seeing in this irreducible brilliant zone is the property there is nothing new outside it okay in the entire brilliant zone so with that we'll stop here with this lecture on real and reciprocal lattices if you have got any doubt you can always drop an email to me at this email address mentioning MOOC and photonic crystal on the subject line thank you Thank you.